Hey guys, it's me Jake from JakeMan21642 and today I'm back at my normal video spot to bring you a long requested and long awaited for video. Finally going to do some updates on my 2003 Honda Accord EXL. Now for those of you who are new to the channel and don't know because I haven't done a, a video on this car in about six months, I've just been insanely busy. Outside of YouTube I do work and I do go to school full time so I apologize if the videos on my personal car have been a little delayed but I'm going to go Go through in this video show you everything do some updates and all of that and uh, I will do some driving videos separate from this one but I thought since it's been so long since I've done an update I'd go ahead and go through it and this video so for those of you who don't know this is my 2003 Honda Accord this one is an EXL uh, four-cylinder five-speed I purchased this car my senior year of high school. Um, I had a 93 Accord and then I had a 02 Civic SI and I totaled the SI, had a truck pull out in front of me and there was nothing I can do and I hit him. So in my search for a car I knew I wanted something again that was a 5 speed. I knew that for sure and I definitely wanted either a German or a Japanese car. I really felt like I hadn't gotten to spend enough time with the first two Hondas I owned so I decided to stick with Honda and I have to say this car has possibly made me brand loyal for life. I will probably always own at least one Honda, especially as my daily driver, because this has hands down been the best car I've ever owned. And I will say right now to anyone my age that is looking for just a reliable, enjoyable to own and nice bullshit free car, the seventh generation Accord. Now obviously the elephant in the room for this update video is something that I really should have done a video on uh, longer ago, but like I said I've been insanely busy, is the accident damage. And as you can see by the driver's side of the car, it is fixed. So um, for those of you who don't know, and I'll even put a link down below to that video, uh, I was sideswiped or merged into basically um, a couple months ago. I had just gotten on the highway and someone coming from the other direction changed lanes right into me. So. Basically, the damage started about right here. I'll even include some pictures in this video as well. But basically it started right there and it ended um, about right here. So basically the entire driver's side of this car has been repainted and as you can see it looks fantastic. Um, it was a whole battle to get this done. It took about two weeks just for her insurance to accept liability because she had some kind of horrible cut rate insurance company. So I ended up having to go to my insurance company, Progressive, and had to get them to fight for me. Luckily, I lost no money out of pocket on it and my insurance didn't go up, but that was a battle within itself. Then it took about 15 to 20 days to get the car fixed and actually get all the body work done, which I was fine with because as you can see it was done correctly. I've also been waiting for a nice day to do this video so I can show you, even though this side kind of is in the shade. But I've, like I said, took them a pretty decent amount of time to get that done. And I did have a rental car. I had a 2015 uh, Chevrolet Cruze RS. I did a review on it. I'm not going to upload it because by the time I had filmed the review, my pickup estimate for the car had been rolled back about another week and I was absolutely angry, which I know I, was just, I wasn't angry at the body shop. I was angry at the situation. And I feel like I really took my frustrations out in that video. So I'm just gonna hold that one back. But as you can see, um, everything they did fix perfectly. This entire side has basically been repainted and they did an excellent job. Um, it was a little wavy when I picked it up, which I think was mostly because I rushed them to let me pick it up. They really wanted to keep it another day to properly detail it, but I ended up doing that myself. But as you can see too, all the seams on the door are still correct. Right there, I'm sure if you remember, it was a little crunched in. The body side molding, they repainted it because you can still see a little bit of the mark uh, from when I had the taxi uh, incident. Uh, for those of you who also don't know, this side of the car was, uh, I had a taxi pull out of a parking space and go right into the side of my car leaving a concert. So got that taken care of at work as well. And the body shop I did use was the one we use at work. So you can see pretty much dealership quality. I mean, this looks like something that would be on the lot at work. But they did a great job. It really looks good. I don't know really what else to say there. So obviously, uh, otherwise on the outside of the car, 
This one does have the 16 inch alloy wheels from the factory. When I bought it, it had a Yokohama Avid and Vigor tires on it. If you're out there buying a 7th Gen Accord and you find a well maintained one, it will probably have those tires because that's what Honda dealerships put on them. But I did end up switching them out for these Michelin Premier All Seasons. These are fantastic tires. A little on the pricey side, but these have definitely been the best tires out of any vehicle I've owned. They are 205-60-16s, um, front disc brakes, obviously. I did replace the uh, brake rotors on this vehicle. Um, all four all around at about 135,000 miles. It got uh, new front brake pads done at the Honda dealership right after I bought it. And then I replaced the rear ones uh, on my own, or with the help of my friend Matt, of course. Uh, I'm sure you guys know his channel, MKM230, on here. But yeah, obviously up front, 16-inch uh, wheels. Like I said, these tires are fantastic, best out of any car I've ever owned. You can see as well, this one does have the splash guards from the factory. One of my favorite things on this car. And I did just detail it, and obviously it's a little dusty around there, because I had to drive down the alley to get here. This car does get dusty very fast, because I drive up and down alleys a lot. As I said, uh, replace the rear disc brakes. I did them all around. The brakes on this car were absolutely horrendous when I bought it. Um, newer brake pads in the rear too. Prob the rotors could probably be turned at this point. They've been on here for uh, a year at this point. You can see a little bit of stuff I need to wipe off just from detailing it. But uh, they could probably be turned at this point, but they're still not terrible. I've definitely had worse. They just obviously are a little bit rusty. You can see as well, I do have my little Honda valve caps which no one will ever notice except for me. And obviously, too, when it comes to rust on the car, um, I'm in Virginia. Rust really is not an issue, uh, at least where I live with vehicles. But this was a Maryland car before I owned it, but it was garage kept, so basically rust-free. Let's see all my stickers on the rear. I don't care what people have to say. I covered it in stickers. I've also got... That right there. Montauk, of course, the car went there over the summer. Did a very epic road trip with it. Uh, went from Virginia to Philadelphia to Long Island. Had an absolute blast. I also did upgrade the plate frame on it. Got this really nice metal one on Amazon of all places. And obviously, too, one of the favorite, one of my favorite things I've done to this car is I did tint the windows. It does have 35% window tint um, all the way around. On the front and rear, I cannot stand the uneven look with some cars with tint, so I had to get 35, and it really does look great. Also makes a huge difference in the summer, having a black leather interior and being in Virginia. And of course, being a Honda, it does have the little blue tint strip on the Halogen front. headlights, this is the little bit different uh, pre-refresh front end. And as you can see too, I do have a front plate on the car. Virginia does require that, and I don't mind it. Usually I don't like front plates, but as you can see, I street park and this thing has definitely taken a couple of beatings, and that is fine with me, because anyone will hit this before they actually hit the car. So we'll start it up. Um, got the keys right here. I got this key cut basically the day I bought the car, because it only came with the valet key. So you can see uh, 27,000 miles and about a year and a half. The key is in great shape. You do have your lock. Unlock right there, and of course, typical Honda. You can press and hold the unlock and it will bring all of the windows down. Trunk release and panic. And then on the door, just insert the key and turn, and they'll all come back up. One of my favorite features on this vehicle. Now inside, this one does have the ebony leather interior. Now one thing I would like to point out, all of these do this, especially the lighter colored ones. The paint on the back of the handle will eventually come off. You can see I've touched this one up, and I actually asked the uh, paint guy at work when he did uh, the taxi damage if he could touch it up, and he goes, I will, but it'll just come off, and he was right because it's come off twice. Just a very typical thing with these. Now this one does have the ebony leather interior, which is probably my favorite interior. I hate the beige one. I think it looks gross. I really do. I'm sorry to anyone out there that does, but the beige with the wood grain, it's not my thing. But inside, as you can see, you do have a full power driver's seat for the driver right here, something I have never had in a car before and I really have come to appreciate. You can also see the leather in here with 156,000 miles. I mean, there's marks, but it's in great shape. There's just a little bit of creasing where I get in and out. I do condition it weekly or every two weeks when I wash the car, but 
you really need to feel it in person. These seats are absolutely perfect. They feel like they have 50,000 miles on them. Another thing with the car, these were one of the first things I added were the uh, Honda OEM front all-weather floor mats. They were like 50 bucks on eBay, completely worth it. So I'll go ahead and start it, give you guys a mileage check. You can hear, typical K-Series, starts up perfect. And one thing you probably did here, um, the second I cut the vehicle on, is I do have this edition up here a Papago uh, GoSafe 260 dash cam, which this is the one that is fully integrated into the mirror. It gives you this very, very nice wide view, which at first is kind of weird, but I've really gotten used to it. Also, the camera itself is integrated in the screen. I promise in person you can see it a lot better, but after my accident, I'm not messing around anymore. Next time someone hits me, I've got it on film. Don't touch me until the cops show up. I'm staying in my car. But got that very nice addition. Um, the video this thing shoots is fantastic, too. It was like 100 bucks, and like I said, it gives you this great-looking mirror, and it's also an auto-dimming review mirror, which back in 03, that was a dealer accessory, and this car didn't have it. So killed two birds with one stone right there. Inside, you can see leather-wrapped wheel, one of my favorite parts of this car. Um... Honest, weirdly enough, my old Accord was the only car I've owned that didn't have a leather-wrapped wheel. My Saturn did, but this one, I wouldn't say has seen better days, but it's seen some miles. It does have some marks on it, which they've been there since I bought it. Nothing I would ever go about changing. It's not that big of a deal at all. Um, do have audio system controls on the wheel, which were basically the feature that sold me on this car. I absolutely love that. I get in other cars now that don't have it, and we'll go trying to put the volume up. Uh, cruise control over here, of course. But everyone pretty much knows the 7th gen interior. All soft touch up top. Just the quality is top notch and very, very typical Honda. So all soft touch up top. Chrome door handles right there. You do have a padded leather armrest on the door, which the padding in this has not receded at all. Padded stitched leather right here, which I love the look of. The aluminum trim, which once again, I just prefer immensely to the ugly wood grain. It just, it looks so clean in here. You do have uh, all four of your power windows, automatic up and down for the driver, power locks right there, and your window lock. Um, 03 was the only year of the seventh gen that didn't come with heated mirrors. Not something I necessarily care about or really need living in Virginia, but just a little interesting fact about these. If I had an 04 up, I would have that feature. Over here, uh, you can see your sunroof controls. Um, Still not used to them being there. I still think this is the most annoying design, but whatever. Typical Honda, but it does open and tilt. Very fast operation, too, just like my CB7 was. I usually leave it tilted all the time. That's why there's kind of a little bit of stains around the edge, because it has gotten left open at work a couple times, and just a little bit of rain has gotten in here. Um, otherwise, too, you can see the two blank switches down here. That's where fog lights would be, but they were a dealer accessory, and this car does not have them, which something maybe I'd like to add in the future, maybe. And then uh, traction control, which in 03 was only a V6 thing, and I'm completely fine with that. I do not need traction control. Um, dashboard itself, uh, like I said, typical 7th Gen Accord. Soft touch around here. It follows around the center and around here. All nice, high quality. You can see the gauges, which I just realized I never gave you guys a mileage check. I'm so sorry. The car does have 156,000 miles. Uh, rolled 150,000 at the beginning of the summer. Really did a lot of local driving over the summer, other than a few road trips. And then in the last three weeks of summer, I put about 3,000 miles on this car. So it definitely it gets shit done. That's the only way I can put it. It gets shit done. It hasn't given me given me a single problem. And yeah. I'm so ready for 200k, bring it on. But like I said, 156,000 miles, and you can see these beautiful gauges right here. You have the tachometer, speedometer in the middle, and then the gas gauge and engine temperature, which typical Honda never even goes to the middle. And yeah, like I said, just beautiful, beautiful set of electroluminescent gauges. One of my favorite features of the car. They just look so great in person. And I also like the cleaner design of the manual transmission gauges that don't have the little uh, shift indicator right there. In the middle, you can see I do have this little phone vent mount thing, which kind of works. It probably works now. Yeah, sort of. But it really doesn't like it when it's hot outside. I have no idea why. Like, if it's above 75, 80 degrees, that just, the phones don't stay on it. Hazard's right in the center. Um, this one, as you can see, of course, I do still have the stock head unit on this vehicle. 
and it's staying. It's not going anywhere. These look so ugly with those horrible aftermarket brackets. But as you can see, AM, FM, uh, CD auxiliary. Press this twice, and it will take you to the auxiliary in I had installed, which is plugged into the back of the satellite radio. And then I can switch back and forth right here in uh, disc 7 versus disc 9. Disc 9 is the aux. Disc 7 is the Bluetooth, which I had installed. So I can make and receive Bluetooth phone calls. I can use all of the steering wheel controls to answer and hang up on that. And of course, too, I can Bluetooth stream music from my phone through Spotify, which is probably what I do listen to most of the time when I'm in this car. Um, I did have an iPhone 5S when I first installed this, and I've had a Galaxy S6 for about a year now. And they both work perfectly fine with the stereo, so it's universal, and it sounds great. Now, when it comes to upgrades with this car, or uh, with the stereo system, I did upgrade to uh, JBL 5 and a quarter inch speakers up front, and then JBL uh, 6x9s in the rear, which I'll show you when I open the trunk. Installed them all properly, went to Crutch Field, and bought the harnesses. I even bought uh, door panel removal tools, because I didn't want to tear this up taking it out, because I actually care about this car. And... It's louder than the stock system was, definitely. It is a six-speaker system from the factory. Do have tweeters on the dash, which I have replaced the driver's side one, and I have one for when that one goes, because they're only sold in pairs. But um, it's definitely louder than the stereo was from the factory, but it doesn't sound that much different. And that just goes to show you the high-quality speakers these used, because Honda did really have a good factory system in the top-of-the-line models back then. Um, definitely, I would say, if you own one of these, and it's an EX or an EXL, I would upgrade the back speakers, and in all honesty, just leave the fronts. The fronts actually aren't paper cone speakers. They're a nice, they're OEM ones, and they're nice, high-quality plastic speakers. Honestly, I would just leave those unless they're blown and upgrade the back speakers, and you'll have a great system. But no regrets on doing that there. I'm glad I did. Kept all the original stuff, so if I do sell the car, I'll probably take the speakers out. But that's not happening anytime soon. Below that, dual-zone automatic climate control. Um... As I've said before, something I've never had in a car I've owned, but I love it after having this car. Dual zone, you know, I could live without, that's whatever. But automatic climate control, I could definitely not live without at this point. I absolutely love having that. Below there, uh, the little storage compartment where I do have my satellite radio and a couple CDs and stuff. And you can see that does open and close with the little door right there. Back behind that, I do have a power outlet and uh, not an ashtray. Make sure to get that in there. Um, back here is the shifter, of course, for the five-speed manual. Also, one thing I did forget to mention is the kit I did install for the uh, Bluetooth and auxiliary in. Also, did come with a USB port that's charge only. I just kind of leave that there so anyone that gets in the car can use it. Um, like I said, power outlet and not an ashtray. Shifter for the five-speed manual. I do have my rice knob on here out of the SI. I don't care. I like this shift knob. I like the little weight it has, and it adds a little bit of color to this interior, but... What can I say? It's a Honda gearbox. They make fantastic manuals. The clutch in here as well is very nice and light. It's easy to drive. It's a perfect daily driver manual. And also, too, having the manual transmission with the four-cylinder just completely wakes up and changes everything about this vehicle. Um, heated seats on each side of that. Two cup holders back here with your little feelers inside of them to hold drinks, things like that. And these cup holders, too, they're low enough that they're really not in the way. I can have, like, tall liter bottles here or, like, a large sweet tea from McDonald's. Does not get in the way of shifting or anything. Parking brake, which probably needs to be adjusted at this point. I just thought about that. Armrest in the middle. Typical 7th gen. The uh, padding has receded in it. They all do that. Good luck, especially with a black interior. Finding one now that actually has padding, but... It's still leather. It's got a little bit of sponge to it, and unlike the 8th Gen Accords, this one's not all ripped up after 70,000 miles. Uh, inside, storage up top, as well as storage down below, and another power outlet, which you can see I have a splitter plugged into for the satellite radio and dash cam, and then phone charger for my phone. Up top as well, you do have a change storage uh, thingy right there. Seats in this vehicle, I can't say enough good things about them. I've also never owned a vehicle with seats that fit me this well. High quality leather, you can see 156,000 miles on this side. It's got the beautiful ruffled look in the middle too, which I just love. Typical Honda once again. My dash cam up top right there. Back behind that is my Easy Pass, and then the microphone for the Bluetooth right there. Um, and that's why this panel kind of sticks out a little bit more than it should because all the wires for the Bluetooth are run behind it. You do have visors with your vanity mirrors right there, of course. 
and you do have interior lighting in the middle which I swapped out for LEDs as well as right here you do have uh, your door on and off for the lights and a little ambient light right here which will shine down at night so you can hold anything in the center and read it anything like that sunglasses container with my dope new shades that I just picked up inside of it and once again like I've said before this is something you don't often think about but a lot of cars don't have and it's really nice when you switch back and forth between glasses and prescription sunglasses like I do another thing I forgot to mention is these do come around and have little extenders on them go ahead put the driver's side window down and we'll step out of this car also cut the headlights on Now, in the back seat of the Accord, you get a really nice amount of room with this vehicle. The car I owned before it, the SI, was two doors, and while I liked that, really not about the two-door life. I really do enjoy having four doors, especially because I don't even really use the trunk on this vehicle. I have a lot of stuff I keep in it, but if I'm out and about, I just throw shit in the back seat. It's easier. I, it's just I really like having four doors for that and because I'm usually the one out of my friend circle driving because I have the nicest car and also I'm the one driving on road trips so it's nice to be able to have the people hauler I've had four and five people uh, going to DC going to the beach going to Baltimore so many times in this car never an issue but stepping in like I said very comfortable back seat um, I'm 6'2 and this is where I would sit plenty of room right here um, you do have pockets on each side, as well as on the door itself. It's all the same padded leather as up front and padding up top, storage down here. I do have my trash can in the middle, because if I didn't, this back seat would be full of Red Bull cans, so I can at least take that out and dump it. Um, you can see I've just got some of my school stuff back here, as well as my work boots from when we go into the shop at school. Armrest in the middle, which is leather padded, two cup holders as well and a trunk pass-through, which is helpful since typical Accord, once again, this seat is one-piece folding. Um, that's probably the biggest drawback is if you want to do an Ikea run with your Accord, you've got the space, but you need to choose between taking one person or being able to flip the seats down. You have the manual control for your sunroof right here, just in case anything ever failed. You can stick a flathead screwdriver in and bring that back. Um, I know, like I said, I know I keep saying it, but typical Honda. And in the rear, I did swap that out with an LED as well. Go ahead and come up front, and we'll pop the trunk, as well as pop the fuel cap. Obviously right here, fuel door, you do have this little nub right there on the cap, which you can hang right there, keep the cap out of the way. I just put regular fuel in this vehicle. I went through a period over the summer of putting mid-grade in it, and I had my gas mileage went down, and I noticed no performance increases. So, yeah, just if you have one of these four-cylinder, just put regular fuel in it. It's fine. I, these were rated with the manual transmission 2634. I usually average in about, I'd say, 70-30 highway city driving. I usually average a solid 30, 31 miles per gallon. So, just put regular in it. Inside the trunk... You can see it kind of got shifted around a little bit, but I do have pretty much all the same junk that's usually back here. My detailing supplies, uh, extra stuff, and tools are in there. I do have windshield washer fluid, spare coolant, and spare oil because I road trip this so much. Just things to keep when you do have an older vehicle. Um, umbrella, ice scraper, a squeegee, just random stuff. I got my sitting chair up here, which I bought while I was on Long Island and just have left in the car because I seem to always end up at concerts and events where that would be useful and I don't have one. Uh, over here, it's the emergency kit, tire pump, and a uh, battery jump starter, which probably needs to be charged. But just, yeah, all the standard stuff I usually keep in my car. Um, just for as much as I drive, as much as I road trip, and all the things I do. Just useful things to keep, especially for other people. Most of this gets used on other people than it ever gets used on this car. From the factory, jack storage is inside of there. And you do have these nice little access panels as well, if you ever need to change a taillight. Now up top, as you can see, not lined on the pre-refreshed ones. That was a V6 thing that was added. But after, o or I believe it was 05, 06, and 07, the four-cylinder EXL models did get a trunk liner. I've always wanted to just grab one at the junkyard because you can see right where it just goes. Also have debated adding a lip spoiler because you can see right here are the points where you would drill to put one on. 
really am debating it. Probably something I'll do eventually. I wanted to get it done while the car was in the body shop, but it got to the point where I just wanted my car home so bad I didn't care. And on the rear, obviously, incandescent bulbs in the taillights. Fine with me. I can change that in like five seconds. Um, and it looks right. I really do. I'm one of the few people that actually prefers this rear end. I think it's just classic Honda style. Another thing, I did switch the plate bulb to LED. Something I really think cleaned up the look of this car, especially with the plate frame. It looks great. And obviously on this side, Everything follows over here. And up front in the passenger seat, which is manual, V6 gave you a power passenger seat. This one also does have the side airbags, which were an option uh, when it was new. Inside the glove box, as you can see, I have a fat stack of not only any service that I haven't done to this car that I've taken it uh, either to work or to the Honda dealership for, which I just noticed both use the same shade of blue paper. Um, I have the receipt in here for that. I also have the receipts for any parts I bought for this vehicle inside of here. I did pick up an original set of owner's manuals and everything of that nature, even the little quick start guide right there. So I have all of those for the vehicle as well. My GPS. This is the one that hasn't gotten stolen and a little tire pressure thingy. That's another thing with this car. It has been broken into not once, not twice, but three times. Life on the mean streets of Richmond. I'll actually show you over here. This is what I came out to uh, the third time, which I guess was more of an attempted break in, but you can tell someone was trying to get in through right, right here and they ripped up the weather stripping and I buffed them off but there were scratches where you could tell they were just going at it which that wouldn't have even gotten them anywhere because the door as you can see goes right inside of this crease. We'll pop the hood. Now up under the hood of this very very long rambly and drawn out video which I apologize about that is the 2.4 liter or K24 engine um, up underneath of here, which like I said, 2.4 liter dual overhead cam IV tech. This produces 160 horsepower and about 166 pound feet of torque. So this is one of the few Honda engines that has that magical thing of more torque than horsepower. And with the manual transmission, this is more than enough power for daily driving. I absolutely love this car. The manual shaves about an entire second off of the zero to 60. So more than enough power for my day to day driving and I can easily make it from Richmond, Virginia to Philadelphia to Port Jefferson, Long Island on about half a tank of gas. So no complaints at all about this engine. Like I said, you can see everything under here is in great shape. Um, last year I did replace the radiator cap, thermostat, and both of the radiator hoses. I also flushed it and it has fresh Honda OEM Type 2 coolant. I try to always change the oil myself, but Sometimes I don't have the time and it does go to work for that. But otherwise, all the maintenance of my car, I really do myself. Do have a K&N drop-in filter in there. Both of the headlights have been replaced. It does have a Honda battery. Funny enough, I actually called around when I decided to replace the battery and Honda had the cheapest one out of any place. So, as a Honda OEM battery, that's one of the things it went to the dealership for. The serpentine belt was replaced. You can tell that because it has this brown shit up here, which anything K-Series, if you don't change the serpentine belt, you'll get this mark under the hood. My SI had the same thing, they just do that. But yeah, no complaints with this engine at all. Um, no oil consumption as far as I've noticed. Like I said, plenty of power, excellent fuel economy. There is nothing that I've asked this car to do that it hasn't done. And that's what I'm saying is this has just been the perfect daily driver. I love the seventh generation Accord. I love the way it drives. I love the way it looks. You know, I know people look at this and go, he calls himself an enthusiast and it's just a silver Accord. But I kind of like after all the cars I've owned, which stuck out in every single situation I had them in, just being a silver Accord and a sea of silver Accords. Um, like I said, this is just a daily driver, my kind of fly under the radar car. And I love it. I love the snappy hydraulic power steering, the double wishbone suspension front and rear, which is one of the reasons why it handles so great. That's another thing too, that since everyone just loves the V6 so much, they don't consider the four cylinder model 
is a lot less weight over the front wheels. This car really does handle like a dream once you put some great tires on it. So I think that's a good place to wrap this up. Any questions, comments, anything like that down below? I'm sure there's things I've forgotten in this video which I'll probably add in somehow. But anything, drop it down below guys. Thanks for watching and I promise I'll do some driving videos. I'm sorry this video was so long but it's been so long since you've seen this car I felt like it was appropriate. And I will bring some driving videos, things like that, and I will make the update videos a lot more regular. So anyways guys, thanks for watching and subscribe for more.